Contribution margin, margin of safety. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, the email and the website. <clears throat> and the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, we have free weekly live chats. I want to first define contribution margin. It's very common in cost accounting. So cost, contribution margin, first of all, is defined as sales less variable costs. And the way I like to describe it is it's what you have left to cover two costs, your fixed costs and whatever's left over is profit. So contribution margin is what you have to cover fixed costs and whatever is left over is profit. It brings up another point, which is that looking at fixed costs on a per unit basis can be misleading. It's much better as a manager to look at fixed costs only in terms of total dollar amount. And here's why. You have to cover fixed costs no matter what. Fixed costs don't change. But if you're looking at it on a per unit basis, the more you produce or sell means a lower fixed cost per unit. It creates the illusion that your fixed costs are going down. And when in reality, in terms of a total dollar amount, fixed costs don't change. So here's an example. Let's assume a company has budgeted sales of 500, 500 units. And here's the income statement detail. We have per unit numbers on selling price, direct material and labor costs, variable manufacturing overhead, fixed manufacturing overhead, selling and handling, which would vary with the number of units you handle, and a fixed selling and admin cost that we look at on a per unit basis. So our total cost, if I add up the cost per unit numbers is 88. And if I look at it on a per unit basis, 100 units less 88 is a profit of 12. And you'll note off to the right that our total fixed overhead is $10,000. We have to cover that regardless of how many units we sell or produce. Okay, let's change the scenario. Assume the country's company's actual sales go to 800 units, they increase. The total fixed overhead equals $12,000. The actual sale price is $95 a unit. And direct material costs increase, decrease, excuse me, by 10%. So we've got changes in the scenario. The question is, what is the company's actual contribution margin per unit? and actual contribution margin in dollars. And as I do on a lot of videos, I try to give you some steps here. So the first is, we input the changes into the calculation. And if we're just looking at contribution margin, we don't need to look at fixed costs. They're not part of the contribution margin formula. We're, again, we're only looking at contribution margin, which is defined as sales less variable costs. The other step is, is that once we input that per unit information, we multiply everything by 800 units to get contribution margin in dollars. So we have a new sale price per unit, 95. We increase the direct materials by 10%. Direct labor per unit stays the same. Here's variable manufacturing overhead. We were given that $12,000 number. We ignore fixed manufacturing overhead, it's contribution margin. We ignore fixed selling and admin administrative costs because it's contribution margin. We do include shipping and handling, that's a variable cost depending on how many units we sell or produce. And so these numbers on the total dollars column, in the total dollars column, are more multiplied by the 800 units as I work my way down. And so I end up getting a contribution margin, sales in blue less total costs in black of $32. And I also get contribution margin in dollars of 25,600. The other topic I wanted to discuss here is margin of safety, which is a cushion. Good way to think about it is a cushion. Margin of safety is your actual or budgeted sales, depending on what you're looking at, less break even. It's the cushion or the sales that you generate above your break-even. 
So another way of thinking about it is, it's the dollar amount of sales that can decline before you reach break even. And again, break even is defined as sales less all costs, which would be less variable costs, less fixed costs with no profit. That would be break even point. Another way of saying it, as I have here, at break even, your fixed costs equals your contribution margin because what we're saying is, is that sales minus variable costs, which is contribution margin, equals your fixed costs. As a result, you have a profit of zero. So you can look at it either way. So think of margin of safety as your cushion. If I break even at a thousand units and I have a margin and I have an actual level of sales of fifteen hundred, I've got a margin of safety of 1,500 actual less break-even of 1,000, which would be 500 units break-even. So now I amend the question again. A company has sales of 100,000. It has a contribution margin, again, sales minus variable costs, of 10% of sales and a margin of safety of 20,000 in dollars. What's the company's fixed cost? Fairly complex question because they're giving you sales in dollars, margin of safety in dollars. They're giving you contribution margin as a percentage, and that percentage is as of sales, which was not uh, sufficiently explained in the question for the student. Well, let's take our steps. Step one, sales less margin of safety should equal your break-even sales because the margin of safety is your cushion above break-even. So if my sales are 100000 and my margin of safety is $20,000. Then my break even in sales, total dollars must be $80,000, $100,000 minus $20,000. Step two, I use the break even in sales that I just found out, and I divide contribution margin in percentages. If I multiply those two numbers together, I get a contribution margin of dollars of $8,000. Break even in sales times the contribution margin that's inside that break even level of sales. I get contribution margin in dollars. So at break even, contribution margin equals fixed cost. So if my contribution margin is $8,000, I know that my fixed cost is also $8,000. So what I just figured out was if I go back up to the question, I figured out the company's fixed cost in dollars. I figured out break-even sales. I took break-even in sales and figured out the contribution margin. And if I know the contribution margin in dollars here, I know my fixed cost in dollars because they have to equal each other because of break-even, I have a zero profit. That's why I use break-even in sales to calculate the contribution margin. Because that allowed me to say, if my contribution margin is 8000 I know my fixed costs have to be 8000 That's as far as we're going to get on contribution margin and margin sales. If you go to the website, stltest.net, we have our toughest accounting classes, upcoming live chats. On topics I'm asked the most about, here are the upcoming courses and the dates and the times. You can go to the site to find out more about the small group live chats. and also. The book Cost Accounting for Dummies, I teach a free online chat where I teach a chapter of the book free online just about every week. You can email me to find out more about the free live chat for the Cost Accounting for Dummies book. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.